My name is Kristen Labritz. I'm the Director of Career Services at College, mm -hmm. uh, class of 98. So it's been a little while since I've graduated, um, but I'm thrilled that you are here for the Life After IC recent mm -hmm. alumni panel. Um, what we're gonna do today is invite our panelists to come on screen um, one at a time in just a minute and introduce themselves. And then we're gonna kick things off with a question or two and then open it up to all of you actually to be able to ask questions as well. Um, so start thinking of those questions you may have for our panelists. Um, it'd be great if your questions were kind of open um, for most, if not all of the panelists to be able to answer. If you do have something specific, you can also post that and we may get an opportunity for you to ask somebody a specific question. Um, what we'll ask you to do at question and answer time is to post your questions in the chat box so we get a sense of who would like to ask something and then Julia or myself will um, kind of call and ask you to come on screen and ask your question. Um, so at the end of the session, we may also give you an opportunity to meet kind of individually or in small groups with our panelists in our breakout rooms. So we'll see um, kind of where we're at with time when we get closer to 5 p.m. So with that, I wanna turn things over to Julia, who's one of our peer career advisors, and she is going to facilitate today's session. So Julia, if you wanna come on to the screen, we'll go ahead and get started. Hi everyone, my name is Julia. Thank you, Kristen. Um, so yeah, I'm a peer career advisor for career services and I am a recent graduate, journalism major, and I want to thank all of the people who have come to the panel today and the panelists as well. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to introduce them one by one. So when I call out the panelist's name, could you please introduce yourself, uh, what year you graduated, what major, and where you currently are. So with that, I would like to call to screen Aria. Hi guys, I'm Aria, Aria Collins. I graduated Ithaca College in 2018. So two years ago today, I got the Facebook memory and the Snapchat memories. And I, um, I currently live in New York City, Brooklyn, New York, and I am an executive assistant with NBC in their digital news side of things. Thank you, Aria. So uh, now I will be introducing next is Yaw. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Yao. I graduated in 2017. I was a computer science major. I currently work for Mercedes-Benz Research and Development as a software engineer. Yeah, so it's been about three years. <laughs> Thank you. Um, next is uh, Nicole. Hi, my name is Nicole Bond. I graduated in 2018. Uh, I was a psych major with a council minor, and I'm currently in my second year with Teach for America in Miami, Florida. Thank you, Nicole. Um, could we have um, could we have Kimberly next? Hi everyone, my name is Kimberly Dykeman. Uh, I am a graduate of Ithaca College class of 2016. I was a vocal performance major in the music school. Um, I currently work as the ticket services manager for a Christian theater company called Fellowship for Performing Arts based in New York City. Thank you, Kimberly. And last but not least, uh, Zummer, could you come on? Oh, Zemmer, we can't hear you. Perfect. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Zemmer. So I graduated IC in 2017. I did my bachelor's in business administration. I did a concentration in finance and investments. So ever since leaving college, I done uh, work in consulting with Deloitte Consulting, and now I currently work with BlackRock as an associate. And that's been my story since Life After IC. Back to you, Julia. Thank you so much. Um, 
But yeah, um, these are our five panelists. And so next, if you, we could start the panel um, with the first question. And panelists, feel free to answer these questions um, one by one. You can say, I'll go first, I'll go second. Um, so the first question I have for, uh, we have for the panelists are, could you tell us uh, what was the transition like for you after you graduated from IC? Did you have any jobs lined up? Were you still job hunting or did you go to grad school? Um, I can go ahead and get us started. So for me, as I mentioned, I was a, I'm part of Teach for America in Miami, Florida. So that I would say definitely helped with the transition because um, during the last uh, couple of months of my senior year, I was able to kind of finalize everything and get, you know, applications together as well as um, finalized that I was actually going to be in Miami and everything that they needed for me for onboarding. Um, but I will say it was pretty hectic because I remember we graduated on a Sunday and then I literally had that week home to pack. And then me and my dad, we drove down to Florida with everything. So I really only had a week after graduating. Um, but I will say I was definitely glad I had something lined up and we went into Institute and then started our first year teaching. So, so I'll go ahead and, oh, you can go Zamar. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So I'll, uh, I'll go ahead next. So I, when I graduated, I had a offer from Deloitte Consulting back in my junior year. So luckily it was easier to go through college in my senior year. And then I was supposed to start in August. So took the time in uh, over the summer to just explore Ithaca and then started my job in New York City on August 14th. And that was uh, probably one of the craziest experiences going living in Ithaca with everybody to living in New York City in a whole another world. So I think the transition was very important. But one thing to keep in mind is that it's very important to realize that it's a transition. And it's very important to take the time to actually transition. And uh, I think that's where I probably went wrong. It would have been better if I had moved earlier to the place where I was working, taking some time because once I started working, my focus was so much on my job and so much on the things that I was doing that I, did, I never really took time to explore, make new friends and build a community and just dived into my work. And as you, if you know something about consulting, it's very, very demanding. So when you're working 70 hours a week and you're traveling most of the time, you really don't get time for yourself. And I think going in from Ithaca, where I had all the time in the world, to New York City, where I didn't have any time, I think that sudden transition that I tried to make really put me off balance. So that's my story and that's my advice for transition. So my senior year of college, I was actually um, pursuing graduate school uh, for um, continuing my performance degrees um, and master's degree. So I spent most of my senior year um, looking at my graduate schools and doing auditions. Um, most of my spring semester, I was actually traveling every weekend doing auditions. Um, I wound up going straight from my undergrad to uh, Oklahoma City University for a master's in music in musical theater. Uh, they do a lot of crossover with opera and musical theater. So I wound up doing uh, not just musical theater in that degree, but I was doing a lot of opera performance there as well. Uh, it was definitely a transition moving from New York. Um, I'm originally from New York State myself growing up. Uh, so that was a big transition, but it was something that I was really excited for. Uh, leaving Ithaca College um, and just knowing like from the auditions I had to travel to a lot of the schools I was looking at so I had an, a, an understanding of what I was getting myself into um, with school. So yeah. I could go next. I think I think for me um, coming from a television, well, I studied television radio. At first I was looking at like a lot of maybe production specific roles um, during my senior year of college. And then 
I wasn't really hearing back because of our industry and how the timing and the connections and things like that really work. So I decided to look into more like programs. So I applied for a bunch of different like page programs and I was actually a part of the MBC page program. So I started two weeks right after graduation. We started training. Um, in terms of the actual transition, it was definitely hectic, like starting a job right after graduating. I felt like I didn't have a second to really breathe, but at the same time, I was grateful to have a job right after graduation. So I think there's definitely pros and cons when it comes to that. Um, luckily enough, my parents also lives in New York City, so in Brooklyn. So I didn't like try to look for an apartment or anything on my own right off the bat but eventually i did get my own place so we could talk about that as well but yeah so that was my transition looks like it's on me now <laughs> um so i had a quite a an event for one i didn't have a job lined up after um after college so i was in ithaca for about a month and then um so for an international student, we need to apply for some work authorizations while um, that needs to be approved before you start working. So while I was waiting for that, um, I was still job hunting and eventually I got an offer from a small consultant firm in, in New Jersey. So I moved there and um, worked there a little bit for about seven months. And then I uh, moved to Boston for, I worked there for a year and a half. Um, that transition was better because it was in a role that I, um, you know, much aligned with what I studied in school and my interest. Um, I worked there for a year and a half and then I moved to Seattle in my role now. Um, the difference is uh, in Boston, I didn't have a lot of time to actually explore the place like Zamar said. I just went straight into work uh, because my, they wanted me to start early. So um, that does take a toll on you a little bit because you're still, you know, uh, settling into your job and then getting to know your your new environment. So um, if if it's possible, if you can move slightly earlier than your start date, it's always, I think, a better thing to do. Uh, in Seattle, I moved here a good three weeks before I started, so I settled in pretty well. Um, and yeah, that's, I'm in Seattle now. And, um, I like my role a lot, so. My journey was from, you know, not having an offer to getting something in, that I didn't really like, but stayed in it, learned a lot, and then moved to Boston. I worked there for a year and a half, and now I've been in Seattle for nine months. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so for the next question that we have for our panelists, uh, could you all tell us um, what was the biggest challenge you had to face? And I think uh, some of you answered it, but it could be like a follow up question. If you could tell us what would be uh, the biggest challenge or if many tell us what challenges you had after graduating and how did you overcome them? I think I could go first. I think one of my biggest challenges was definitely adjusting back, like adjusting back to New York, back to living with parents, living with siblings, and just trying to get back into the groove of things while also having my first like adult job or like post-graduation experience. So I felt as though they both like clashed each other a little bit. Um, but how did I overcome it? I eventually got my own space um, and yeah, I think that that was my biggest challenge, just like moving back home and like dealing with that. Um, yeah, I'd say the biggest challenge I had, um, I think was just, I was just very anxious and nervous just the entire time because um, once again, I was going somewhere like nowhere else away like away from family so I have nobody down here um at least in Miami I should say so that was just a little bit different and even though like I kind of already did that with college it was just like okay well I'm not four hours away from home anymore like I actually have to get on the plane to get home so that was a little bit difficult and then also too the biggest thing on my mind was even though we were going so our institute it's like training 
So we were housed on um, a college campus during that time, but I was just like always thinking like, all right, I only got like a month or two to figure out where I'm gonna live. And once again, I know nobody down here. So um, I will say that it lucked out because I was able to room my roommate during training. We ended up getting together and then she also knew other people. So it worked out and um, yeah, it ended up being fine. But that, I would say those were my two biggest things. I think for me, um, one of the biggest challenges I've faced um, past uh, graduating my undergrad uh, has been that um, my life's had a lot of changes since undergrad. I've performed a lot um, and I'm transitioning away from that and doing more um, behind the scenes work and just navigating, spending all this time studying one aspect of something and then shifting your gears and how that affects you and your identity and how you, you view yourself um and your self-worth uh but embracing it and kind of finding it exciting but definitely scary when you're when you're navigating that so um that's been one of my biggest challenges but uh i'm doing great so it's working out pretty well <laughs> Um, I can go. So um, Zamar and I are international students, so I think he, he would also speak to that effect. But um, so for us, you know, the, the experience at IC is becomes in some ways what, you know, the, the American experience is for us um, in a way to an extent. So, you know, transitioning outside there now, it's like a, a different version of it. So now comes things like lease is different from you know maybe signing a lease with a couple of friends in in college you might have a friend who is a, an american who can put their names on it or stuff like that so navigating all those becomes new now uh depending on where you are i was i moved to boston and you know things were very different i couldn't find a place so i had to do a sub lease and that was different uh i had to go to um a notary to verify something that's not done in my country so you know it's like what is that this is my original document but you have to go to a notary for them to verify there's a lot of things that are new and you keep um you know finding out and, and trying to get the best advice so you know thankfully we have the international office so if you need to verify some stuff but yeah that that would for me be one of the the challenges like um having to explore new things and making sure you're doing the right thing and you know, reporting things as it should be done for um, specific um, you know, to international students because almost everything about ours is, is, has to be done a certain way and if not, it can cause issues later. So I would say that was my biggest challenge. Uh, the second was transitioning into an actual like you know, real world example. I didn't have the opportunity to do any internships uh, in college. So um, obviously, in my field, um, going to start work for like a, a tech company and, you know, the massive amount of code base you have to kind of navigate was a little bit, you know, intimidating at first, but then you, you get settled in pretty quickly. But I would say those are the two main ones for me. Uh, the latter one is not a big deal because you have a, a mentor and you can always study. But yeah, having to find out, you know, what forms I need for this and you know, the lease things, bills and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a little different from when you're on college campus. Thank you, y'all. So I think there were two big elements for me that were really challenging. First of all, the number one challenge was time. Realizing that I didn't have that much time. I think that was the hardest thing. And, the, and secondly was mindset mindset that this is my new life and I have to get out of my old life. So let's say it's 6 p.m. in uh, Connecticut where I was working. And at that time, usually I would be out there playing crispy with my friends and now I'm not. And so making that transition, having that mindset was the biggest challenge and come conforming to that mindset is what took me the longest. But once I did, 
how I conformed to it was reminding myself that this is the new norm and there is beauty in the ugliness somewhere. And once you start changing and shifting that mindset, you're able to do a lot. And so that's how I overcame it. That's my response to this question. Back to you, Julia. Thank you. Um, so um, I think for the next question we'd like to ask you is, um, for all of you, how did you get to the current job position you have? Um, and what other, sorry, and what other jobs did you have before? I believe some of you mentioned it, but it would be nice to go back to that. And what step would you recommend if, for everyone when it comes to getting employed? What's that important step you would recommend? I can start with that. Um, so I would say the number one thing is for me is network. Uh, networking is very important. Um, pretty much all my jobs after college has been through um, some sort of networking. Um, when I was in New Jersey moving into Boston, I had a friend who was uh, working for Google in, in Boston. So I reached out to him um, you know, with my intention of finding a new job or you know, that I was on the market. And it was through a networking, um, some introduction he did, I got to you know, um, visit one of the companies there and then met a recruiter and that led to my job in Boston. In, Boston. in Seattle as well, it was a conference we attended while I was in Boston. Got to meet this uh, kid who was in my school, like back home in Ghana. He works for Amazon here. So it was through that networking as well. Um, got to meet another engineer who works for Mercedes-Benz. And then um, he reached out to me after some time that they were expanding and if I was interested in a role. So I would say networking, networking, networking. <laughs> you know, because um, I think everyone knows to do the other stuff, which is, you know, you make sure your resume is prepared or um, the, the career services is there to help with that. Uh, the, you could have a mentor who could custom, you know, make it for you, for the industry, you know, all those things could be there. But I think for me, the big thing is, is networking. It's very uh, important. So three things worked for me. To y'all's point, networking. Second is uh, resilience, which is very important. And the third point in this is open to opportunities. And those three things clicked and did everything for me. So first of all, I was always open to opportunities running left and right from my freshman year trying to locate an internship or a job. Resilience played a part because I cannot explain to you how many rejections I got. I think there was a summer I spent around the whole summer applying for jobs and I applied for 300 jobs. And I just got one interview for a door-to-door -door salesman for Verizon. But I did it. I did everything what I could, right? And you build connections, you build up networks, and you meet people. And that's exactly what happened. When I had my interview for Deloitte, I knew the partner that was interviewing me. I knew the senior partner that was going to be uh, that was going to be hiring us all, and I knew a bunch of other managers on that interview team. And it played perfectly because I had already the panel had an uh, an impression of me even before I went in, which played to my uh, betterment. And so that's eventually how I proceeded towards going into consulting. And then I think two, about two years into consulting, I thought it was about time I wanted some change in my career. And luckily I had gotten the foothold that I wanted and uh, I applied to BlackRock. I got the opportunity to interview with a wonderful team and uh, it was pretty simple, straightforward from there for me. But I think those three things are very important in your job search or when you're trying to locate a job. I agree with all those points. Um, I think for, I think for me specifically, the internships that I had in college definitely helped when I was looking for jobs my senior year. So I would say 
if you could do internships, paid or not paid, definitely go for it. I agree with saying yes, because even right now, I don't feel like I am in my like dream career role, but I was, I said yes, and I'm learning so much. So I started off with the page program, which I mentioned. Um, and what really probably got me that job is the internship that I had with NBC prior to that. I stayed connected with my supervisors. Um, I would just say, shoot them an email over the holidays, like just really having that network, but not making it feel forced as well, which helped. Um, I think she had mentioned she called and like said a good word, which helped as well. But another good advice I want to say is to, once you got in touch with a recruiter, keep them in mind. I think so many times we, we think networking is someone who's off a higher position or in that specific industry, but don't forget HR and recruiters and the whole talent development team, because I wouldn't have the job that I have today if I didn't like make that extra step to build a relationship and connection with that recruiter. So when they're looking for somebody to fill that role, they're like, oh, Aria, yeah, she was perfect. So yeah. So for me, I was actually between two different positions. So one was sit here and then teach for America, which I ultimately chose. And that came about because my roommates during my junior year, one of them went through with the year and the other one went with teach for America. So I was able to kind of talk to them and just see how it was going. And um, originally I kind of was like all set for city year because it was going to be in Philadelphia. It was only going to be like an hour away from home. Um, but then when it came to actually choosing between the two, um, I think the biggest thing for me was uh, finances for me have just been a thing. And like, I just knew I didn't have the means to right away figure out where I was going to live, let alone pay for it. Um, so for me, I definitely went with Teach for America pretty much for that because they had, um, I forgot what they called it, but like they had a stipend for moving, a transitional funding. So that was a big help because then I didn't have to worry about that aspect of it. And I think for me, it was just funny because there was a recruiter, um, as Aria said, like recruiters are definitely big, big key roles because um, she just kind of kept, you know, lightly pushing me, but at the same time, like really trying to get me to engage. And I was like, that set, I wasn't going to do it, but then something just clicked and I was just like, you know what, let me give it a try. She walked me through it, helped me through it all, the interviews and whatnot. And um, and it ended up being probably the better decision that I made because I don't think in all aspects, I'd be where I am right now um, in the growth that I've had to if I was in one position as opposed to being in Teach for America. I definitely think that networking is really important in terms of um, opening the door to a lot of opportunities. Uh, I also think that with that, hard work goes hand in hand with that. Um, when you get those opportunities and you show those people that you, you deserve it and you deserve to be there and you work really hard at what you're doing, um, that, that doesn't go unnoticed. Uh, I feel that's very true in both my um, performing career and also um, my career right now is in um, the ticket management that I'm doing for um, theater companies. Uh, so when I was performing, um, I feel like the opportunities I got, I got more so from just knowing people and people connecting me with the right person who had the right opportunity. Um, and I've had a lot of really great experiences. Um, one of my most memorable experiences was that I had the opportunity um, a little over a year ago to travel to Australia um, to tour with a composer, a violinist, and a cellist um, throughout the Sydney, Wollongong area. Uh, and I did an audition for that. I just got in contact with this person through a connection I had through um, my mentors. So it's pretty amazing how those experiences come from not just, you know, me putting a resume out or showing a video and hoping that this company will want to hire me, um, but more so through the people I knew. Uh, as far as my current role, um, I wanted to shift gears and do some more behind the scenes work, which was something that I didn't necess necessarily do in school. Uh, so I interned um, at a general management um, theater production company in the city. 
uh, and their client was this Christian theater company. As I was working um, at the general management company, uh, the Christian theater company I now work for um, really took a liking to me. So again, it was still networking, but in hand in hand with the work I was doing. Um, and it just opened up doors to put me in the position I'm currently in right now. Thank you for that answer. And uh, I think the next question we'd like to ask is, um, could you tell us how y'all made friends, found a place to live, managed finances after graduating? And what is one piece of advice you can share to the new graduates who are trying to make friends in a new place? I could go. I think for me, um, well, friends, living and finances, that whole jazz. Um, in terms of friends, my coworkers became, we became friends because we, it's a program and we were like with each other, especially for training the first two weeks, like with each other from nine to five. So like all just naturally we became close. But besides that, as we were a part of different teams, like you just make connections with some of your coworkers and just like that, you might be at a happy hour and it starts a friendship. Um, in terms of finances and living, New York City is hard, but I think I, you could do it. Find roommates, don't, if you're, in, if you're interested in New York City or any city, roommates is a major key. Um, different platforms to find roommates are like Facebook, GroupMe, and uh, save as much as you can. Um, if you're doing a part-time job while you're in school, save, save as much as you can your senior year for things like first, first and last month security deposit and all that jazz, if you can. Yeah, kind of piggybacking off of that and um, what I had previously, previously said too, like as far as making friends, yeah, it's pretty much who you're working with. Um, so from training, which was like a month to a month and a half long to the school site that I was at, um, my coworkers essentially became my friends. Um, so that definitely helped. And I would say too, and like along with that, I'm a very introverted person. So if I don't really need to be around people and talk to people, like I won't do it. So for me, it was kind of a challenge just because I was like, all right, now I know I need to be open. Um, but letting myself do that, like it helped me, you know, get along with people and like make sure I had at least a circle of people who I know I could go to. Um, and then as I mentioned beforehand with the finances, I, I don't go into details, but it, it just was not there after graduation, right? And so, like I had said, the biggest thing was that um, transitional funding from Teach for America. Um, if I didn't have that, um, I really don't know if I would be employed right now, to be honest. Um, or I would be at least at home with my parents and then working somewhere around there. Um, so what I would say to that point is, in my case, they that's kind of like part of their... I guess, marketing, if you will, um, in case for, for people who need it. But I would say that's definitely not something you should fear asking, because I know a lot of different positions may give you a stipend or might give you a bonus, especially if you are moving. So I would just say definitely look into them, like do that research and then definitely ask as well. Because um, especially if you're in that position, that could make or break a decision. Um, so, um, for me, like, um, I think a couple of people mentioned your coworkers, especially if you know, if you don't know anyone in, in, in the city where you're going, um, become your first, you know, sort of, uh, friends. Uh, but one thing that has worked for me too, both in Boston and especially in Seattle, because I, I knew just one person here, but, uh, he's also very busy and we, I wouldn't say we're that close, but, um, I used to uh, meet up a lot and um, try to find something you're interested in, uh, find a group on meetup and then those, you know, people, the group that you meet also become, can become friends. So I enjoy soccer a lot. I play every weekend if the weather is good. So I found a group on meetup and those people became my friends too. You meet a lot of people. So um, that's something that has worked, but obviously I made friends with my, my coworkers as well. And uh, with finances, I try to uh, follow a, a budget every month. And so I talk to my friends who are in like finance 
um, to help me with things that I, you know, will help me better manage my finances. So that has also worked a little for me so I can save. And if you can, you should have roommates too, because that would help you save as well. And if you can afford and you, you want that privacy, then it's fine as well. So I'll continue to Yao's point. I think uh, I think it it's different for me than uh, probably everybody on the panel here because uh, when I started in New York City, uh, I was in a consulting role, and so we were all my projects, all my work was 100% travel. So we were traveling to different cities, and my coworkers were traveling in from different parts of the country also. So nobody actually came from New York City. So at the end of the day, over the weekend. Uh, none of my coworkers were back in New York City. And so when you're spending four out of seven days in another part of the country, you're spending one day out of which you're uh, 12 working, 12 hours, then you really just have two days to find yourself a social group and find yourself friends. And I think that's where, to Yao's point, where just, uh, I think two things would have helped most if one, you stay patient, believe in yourself, believe in that times will be better. And trust me, I've been there. I've seen how you can be loneliest in the biggest city in the world. But at the same time, it's important to stay resilient and then to actually go out and uh, explore groups. Like uh, Yao said, you know, I eventually that's what I did. You know, I started looking at groups and things and people who shared the same hobbies as me. And uh, I started meeting people and, you know, life starts to change slowly and steadily. And don't, you can't expect quality suddenly out of nowhere, but maybe you can, you know, but the focus is to stay patient and ride the course. And to finances, I think I've, I've had a huge journey with finances. I think coming into New York City, uh, working for Deloitte, I just, uh, I think I just went completely wild. I just splurged money everywhere where I could see. I, I had a one bedroom apartment. I was living life. I was traveling every weekend. I was doing everything I want until I realized that this is not the way, you know, uh, to live. And I think that's where I started uh, utilizing a lot of my own background and uh, started talking to a couple of different financial uh, representatives. And, you know, my best advice would be that you don't need a lot of, uh, Wall Street bankers to help you manage your finance. You really just need a couple of apps that are already on available on App Store that help you budget finance and see and be reflective. And you really just need a further developed insight into what you're spending, how you're spending, and what your goals are. All conversations should always begin with a goal. And once you have a goal in mind, you'll see how everything will change in your own budget. So that's my experience. Uh, for me, uh, I was really, I guess, lucky in a sense that I, I went straight to grad school. So I, I met a whole new group of people at, in a second college environment. Um, and I've been really fortunate with all the performing opportunities I've done. You know, I've gotten to meet a lot of different people and collaborate with a lot of different people throughout the world. Uh, after my graduate degree, I moved back home. Um, I moved in with my parents again, which was definitely strange after living you know away from them for six years you know thinking four years in undergrad and then two years in graduate school but for for new york city you know it just seemed like the better decision for me was financially um to make that decision to save up money uh it you know it's not ideal but i i'm now at this place where i'm really glad that i i'm doing this and that i am saving up um, so that when I really want to have my own place and do those sorts of things, I'm not living, you know, necessarily paycheck to paycheck or worrying that I don't have, um, you know, like emergency funds or any sort of thing like that. And then, you know, I like have a car, I have certain things that I'm just independent, you know, uh, from other people for, uh, social life. Um, I'm still very close to people from Ithaca. Uh, a lot of my friends from school actually live nearby me, which is really nice. Um, of course, I do have a lot of friends that don't live anywhere near New York, um, especially people that I met in grad school. Um, so just being able to continue to connect people virtually has been really, 
really great. Um, I think I still have like a Facebook uh, messenger group with my roommates from Ithaca College and we still talk all the time. So um, I graduated what, four years ago, so. You're, you've been sharing great information so far. Thank you, everybody. Um, we have got about 15 minutes left for today's event. So I'm actually going to launch a quick poll, and I'm going to ask all of the students um, if you could respond to the poll. We can either ask some more questions of the panelists. We're not seeing any come through the chat. Um, or we can go into some breakout rooms and let you talk like two to three students with each panelist and have a little more individual interaction. Um, We'll give you a, a minute to finish responding here. We see just a few so far. So far, we're almost evenly split. So if you haven't answered, please do. All right. Um, where are we at? It's about 12. It looks like almost everybody has answered and it is um, pretty evenly split. So I think what we'll do is to keep going um, with a panel presentation and actually ask, um, we can ask you all another question unless anybody wants to throw one into the chat. Um, okay, we see one here. Um, so uh, Alexander's asking, what advice would you give to recent grads still job searching? If anybody wants to jump in on that one first, go for it. Um, I can go. Uh, so I think to the point where a couple of people did mention that, um, you know, they started off with a role that wasn't like your ideal career goal or, you know, role, something like that. But, um, in these trying times, I, I think getting your foot in the door in something that is as close to your dream job or you know career would be good and then um navigate from there but also um i'm not sure that we can ask the the student questions but it would be good to know what failed you um because um there are still some industries that are still hiring like normal um some have been affected so if they've been affected then you might want to consider something that is as close as possible to to get things going now, gain some experience, learn as much as you can, and then um, eventually you you make that transition when you've built that social capital, like networks we are talking about, and then eventually move. Um, I would say that's the best, and especially in these times. But if you are in a field that is you know still thriving, uh, I, I'm in the tech field, and in some companies they're still hiring. Um, it's not been affected at all, so that would be fine. But depending on your field. You might want to consider something if you're not getting that dream job or you know um, responses back uh, something that's close just to get your foot in the door and then navigate from there would anybody else like to jump in and answer that one if not we've got another question in the chat so I'll just quickly, Kristen, I'll just quickly uh, add something to what y'all said. I think that's a big, tough question for uh, graduating class of 2020, entering into one of the toughest times the market is in. But with that, you know, every day when I look at my LinkedIn uh, newsfeed, I see a bunch of people talking about how they've gotten laid off or how they're entering into the market. And I see a wonderful response of people jumping in there, asking them for their resume, giving them recommendations and uh, helping them out. So there is a community that feels for you. So know that first of all, and that community will help you. Now with that shifting on, shifting gears into your answer, what you should do. So if I was in your place, I would do a couple of different things, right? I would first make a list of the roles that I think I would want, right? Understand those roles. And once you understand those roles, hit up the companies and look at different people. LinkedIn is go going to be your best friend there, right? Look at the people, look at the office, look at the, uh, the city and start reaching out to people. Start branching out, start reaching out, start developing, start asking questions, right? And at the same time, the best method, the best advice I can give to you is use your resume as a weapon. How? 
give your resume to once you build a connection with people, give them your resume to critique. Do not ask them to uh, look at your resume if they can give you a job, but rather ask them if they can critique your res resume. See, what's going to happen is once they look at your resume for critiquing, they're actually going to go through each and every single line, understand who you are, understand your objectives and what you've done. And at the same time, if there's something that they think might improve your resume, they're also going to do that. But if you give them your resume to let them hire you, I think they're not going to spend more than 15 seconds on it. So it's little tips and tricks like that that you'll pick up on your way. And I think uh, just stay resilient, just stay resilient. That's all. Thank you, Kristen. Nice. Thank you both. Anybody else? I'll jump to the next question if we're ready. All right. Um, so Lauren posed a question. Um, Lauren's supposed to move to Japan on the Japan Exchange Teaching Program in September. Um, if that gets delayed, what is your suggestion on what to do in the meantime? So as you think of a response to that, you could probably even go a little broader um, as many students are potentially looking at delays or you know, some changes in what they may have wanted to do. What would you suggest somebody do over the next few months if something's delayed short term? Um, so I'd say specifically for teaching, just because I had a couple things in mind, um, depending on what it is you're expected to teach, there's, um, especially now since everything's moved online and me being a teacher, Zoom classes every single day, but um, there are online like tutoring platforms and even like actual um, full, more full-time jobs um, that you could put in place. Um, whether you want it full-time or part-time. Um, and I would think just in general then, it, if, you, if you know you would still have the opportunity to do what it is you plan on doing and it's just that it's delayed, um, I would say kind of what someone had mentioned earlier is just finding different things to do. Um, if, it, I, like it kind of depends on like, if it's something like you really need a job, then I would like be a little bit more proactive and just making sure you can search. Um, but if it's something to necessarily fill the time, so to speak, still make it worthwhile, still make it um, in the realm of what it is that you want to do, because it can never hurt to add on to the experience that you already have with something that you're doing in the meantime, meantime and also something that could even potentially still carry through um, as you do make your transition to your next location. So Lauren, here's my advice for you, right? But before I get to the advice, let me get you a question. So my question for you, Lauren, is what if this, if, I hope it doesn't happen, but if, the, if this program to Japan does not work out, what's your plan B? And if you have an answer to that question, that's awesome. Move on to plan C. But if you do not have an answer to what your plan B is, if it doesn't work out with moving to Japan, then that then this is the perfect time to go and think about what should be your plan B. Because in the times that we live right now, and even if the times that we do not live right now, it's very, very, very important to always have a plan B and a plan C and a plan D. Because the more prepared you are, the more successful you are going to be. As an example, when I was switching to BlackRock, I had three different offers before I finally chose BlackRock. And that was because I had taken my time to make sure that the transition that I was going to do was going to be the most successful one for me. Set yourself up for success. And the way you're going to set yourself up for success is by having a plan A, plan B, and plan C. So my, my friendly advice would be focus on having a plan B. And if you already have a plan B, move over to plan C. Keep yourself prepped up, ready to go, and thrive in. Thank you. I think both Nicole and Zamar made a lot of really great points there. Um, and I think to jump off of those, even though your time at Itzka College is possibly at its end right now, um, and you're looking for this opportunity in Japan, which a lot of things are uncertain right now, um, I think a lot of people have a lot more time on their hands than, than ever before. And I think that this is a good time, not only to think about your, your plan A, plan B, plan C, um, and, you know, I think it's a good time to continue learning and figuring out what's, what additional skills you can, you can learn in this time that 
you're not so sure what's going to be going on while you're also figuring out your options. Um, this will not only make you feel, I think maybe like fulfilled with personal goals, but it'll also down the road when maybe you're, you're doing your plan C, you have all these extra abilities that you maybe didn't have before when you were trying to mull over what your decisions are. Um, and I, I feel like in my own personal experiences, the, the continuation of learning and the continuation of just getting as many skills as possible is always going to help you. And Kimberly took the words right out of my mouth because that's exactly what I was going to say. But no, for sure, definitely, if you can, I think at the same time, because we're living in such an unpredictable time right now, and I know it's hard maybe not feeling as motivated or not feeling the, or feeling guilty that you're not productive. So at the same time, I want to say don't be too hard on yourself, but take advantage of a skill that you could learn that you didn't have time to learn. So like for me personally, I kind of regretted not taking a marketing class. So I'm not doing it every single day, but I try to at least dedicate like an hour a day for a LinkedIn learning on how to be like a social media strategist. So just try to build on a skill that you wish you had the time to do, but don't be too hard on yourself. Maybe even create like a hit list or like an Excel spreadsheet of like companies or people that you meet that you've like kind of stalked on LinkedIn that you would like to connect with in the future once things get back to normal because we are all hoping for things to get back to normal. So I think a hit list and building on your skills is what you can do while we're all waiting to see what's going to happen. Well, you all are giving some really great advice. You could, you could come work in career services. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I do, we do have one more question to ask of you. I don't see um, anything else in the chat yet. So I'll, I'll ask our final question. Um, and while you're thinking about the answer to this or uh, waiting for your turn to respond, I'll also ask our panelists if you're um, willing um, to either put your email or your LinkedIn profile in the chat. Um, that would be wonderful. We always talk about um, how amazing our alumni are in terms of um, you know, interacting with students, and we really appreciate you being here today, but we know that they may have some follow-up questions for you. So if you're willing to share, that would be wonderful. Um, so the question I'd like to ask is, what, what advice, what's one more piece of advice you want to share with the students that we haven't asked you about, or we haven't touched on today? So I know that may take a, a second to think about, we'll let you jump in again as you would, as you feel ready. I think for me, um, don't be afraid if your path isn't straight. Um, I, think, I think that was one thing I, I thought my whole life, even after, right after graduating school, is I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And then my life hasn't been that way. So I think that's something that you should be aware of going into this new step in your life and embrace it. Yep. And I think for me, I would say one advice I would give is don't be too hard on yourself. I think same as not for having things to go point A to point B. Things don't happen as a straight line, but just don't keep pushing. Don't be too hard on yourself and make some time for self-care. I think in college we were so used to like getting things done or getting assignments done and eating when you can and doing whatever. But now that you maybe have some downtime now, summer break or graduating, like use that time for self care um I, I would definitely speak to the um reaching out um you know to to just friends alumni on linkedin uh, the thing is um zama talks about being resilient um it's fine if you you're getting rejections don't give up um keep pushing reach out to people, you find a job in a company, my criteria has been, if I find a job in a company, I look at, you know, people in that city, if I know anyone there, and then I narrow down the, the search to, are there any ICL alumni, you know, I can reach out to, um, email some of them if you can, um, you know, just introduce yourself um, to them on LinkedIn, um, try to establish that connection, some might get back, um, very early, you know, quickly, some might take a while, but, you know, keep 
put all your eggs in the basket, as they say, and, and definitely you, you hear back from one. And I think it's a good thing um, that we're sharing our LinkedIn. Feel free to reach out uh, personally anytime. Um, my background is tech. Uh, I'm a software engineer, but I do know a lot of people too. So um, yeah, you, you may never know. So definitely reach out, use LinkedIn as the tool and don't give up, keep pushing. Zamar said 300, at a point I was at 257 too. So yeah, don't, <laughs> don't give up, keep pushing and you, you get there. Yeah, um, I definitely want to second that. Um, I was actually a PCA as well um, during my years at uh, IC. So the big thing that I remember, and you know, stop me if it's not a thing anymore, but um, there was the alumni directory and um, just going on and you can like search by major, you can search by what they're doing, location and all that stuff. So that along with something that you have to your disposal as being in the um, IC student, as well as LinkedIn. I think those are just great resources because um, whether or not you reach out to them, you can still see like what opportunities are out there. Um, but then I would definitely encourage you to reach out um, because I know I maybe, I think I've done it maybe like once or twice and like you get responses because um, if people are choosing to be on there, it's not that they're just on there because they graduated, like you're choosing to be on it. So um, I would say definitely utilize that and um, kind of, just echoing what was said, don't, I'm a perfectionist and I know I'm like my biggest critic. Um, it definitely, like definitely give yourself some um, forgiveness, give yourself some praise um, and just know that you're like, you're doing everything that you're trying to do. And the fact, and if I, I would say along with that is if you are um, that set and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do, but I, like if you're that worried, so to speak, then that means you're still on the right path because you care that much because you are that passionate about it. Um, and that's enough to get you to where you need to be. So my one final piece of advice would be, be real to yourself. It's so important to be realistic and uh, be true to yourself and know yourself. Take a pen and a paper and write down your strengths and write down your weaknesses. Understand what your strengths are, understand what your weaknesses are, and then think about how you can use your strength to your own benefit. You know, have Mamba mentality. Be resilient, be a survivor, be a thriver, and remind yourself that this is all for the betterment. There's going to be a lot of times, a lot of days in your life where things are not going to make sense and uh, things you will not know. There's going to be a lot of time where you don't know what you're doing, why you're doing or how you're doing it, but have faith and know this, that um, I, I really like something that Steve Jobs said. He said that uh, looking, uh, looking ahead, we can never make sense of things. You know, we can never connect the dots, but looking back, we can always connect the dots and we can always make a picture. And we're always, we always get the aha moment, which is like, wow, I, if I hadn't done that in my life, I wouldn't be here today. And I think if you've, if you've heard anything from any of the panelists today, that's one thing, is that that one thing clicked in their life and that one thing happened and that one opportunity came and that one person came that did everything for them and they're where they are today. And similar, same is my story. So be open to opportunities, be resilient, be a survivor, be a thriver, know yourself and uh, you'll succeed. Thank you thank so you. much for your words of wisdom. And Julia wanted to um, thank you all as well. Yes, thank you so much for everyone for coming in today. I know you guys have busy schedules with everything going on in the world right now. Um, so thank you so much for coming in and giving your advice. Um, for everyone, um, please check out the chat. I noticed the panelists have been writing down their info, their LinkedIn or their emails. Make sure to copy that down. Um, and paste it. Um, if you have follow-up questions that you couldn't ask during the panel, please make sure to reach out to them. Um, I'm sure they'll help you as much as they can. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. We are very thankful you could come in today.